Hi creators, it's Claire and happy Sunday. I just wanted to spend a few minutes today talking about why the all or nothing approach isn't actually helping you to catch up on your finances. And I see this so often. People get behind in their finances. Hey, we all do it. I am currently a whole financial year behind on my jewelry finance, jewelry finances? jewelry business, it's about as neglected as my Etsy shop, which has eight things in it, I think, currently. Um, I just reopened it after moving house and I probably have literally hundreds of items ready to post. So I'm not doing a great job with my Etsy shop and I'm not doing a great job with keeping up with the finances because I haven't made it a priority. But what I'm not going to do, because I know it's not going to be helpful, is I'm not going to approach it with an all or nothing way. So when I say all or nothing, it's that I have to do everything in one go. And there's kind of two reasons I see this happen. So the first one is that we don't trust ourselves enough to do it slowly, to take it slowly, to do just one piece at a time because it's not worked up until now, this kind of slowly, slowly approach. So I need um, a big change and um, like an exponential change to make sure it happens. And once I've sat down, I can make sure it happens by trying this all or nothing. Like I have to do everything. The second reason is that like it's some sort of punishment, self-inflicted punishment that because you haven't been doing it regularly, then you must make sure you do it all at once. And we kind of punish ourselves because this all or nothing way, this have to do everything, have to get everything perfect, don't forget. Everything has to be accurate, that's drilled into us a lot. Um, this I have to sit down and I have to do it all in one go is probably the most painful, the most stressful, the most time consuming, way to do your finances. So why we think it's a good idea is kind of a bit of one of those human mysteries of the mind, I think. Because who has just an open calendar, an open schedule, hours and hours with literally nothing else to do? Because that's what you're going to need to find before you sit down with this all or nothing approach. Because you know you have to do everything and that is going to take a long time, let's admit it. So trying to clear out that many hours is just one barrier we have to overcome. Don't forget we have to add in the patience we need. Who has that much patience at one go? Who has that much willpower or motivation in one go? And who has all the knowledge that you would need to be able to literally do everything that you need now? in one go because you need to know all your receipts, all your expenses, all your income, how to access that on all the platforms and download it and save it and then use that information to actually create your bookkeeping, all the deductions that you're entitled to, all of those things like that is so much knowledge and we're trying to cram all of that into a few hours, maybe a weekend, maybe if this is like a big thing, maybe a week. Like that's a nightmare even for me and I love doing finances. So like it just, one of those things, one of those traps I think that we fall into when it comes to how we can catch up with our finances. How can we get our finances up to date? And we kind of think back and we go, well, I've tried doing it in pieces. I've tried that piecemeal approach that hasn't worked. So I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to make it as time consuming as possible, as stressful as possible. And when I talk about like time consuming and stressful, it's just because we're jack packing it into that one time frame. Like I fully expect if you took a, the opposite of the all or nothing approach, which I'm sure you can work out, it's going to probably take the same amount of time. It's probably going to take more time because we have to log in, do a few things, go away, come back, log in again. Like that's probably going to actually make it take a little bit longer, but we don't have to clear our calendar for the next three days to sort it out. We can actually do it in blocks that are already available in our calendar. So 
if you've fallen into the trap of this all or nothing approach is kind of I've termed it then let me know in the comments um, but I want to say I'm gonna be sharing this but really in more depth um, around how we get behind what impact that has on our business and more tips on how we can actually catch up without the whole time consuming weekend thing without it being painful and hopefully without it being stressful so that actually we can get back to business we don't have to clear the decks for a weekend of numbers because we can actually do it in a much easier way and breaking it down from the all or nothing approach is just one factor i think that you actually need to create that bookkeeping habit sexy as that sounds um to actually help you not only get up to date that's just one part it's the keeping up to date that's when you're really going to start to see the benefits of knowing your finances and it really does help your business grow and when you're on top of that stuff and you're helping your business grow guess what you make it to your goals faster so if this sounds like something you do the all or nothing approach or something you have done I'd love you to join me on the training on Wednesday is free um, I'm gonna be live at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Times which is Sydney time and um, but there will be a recording for those who aren't able to make it on time uh, on time at the time um, I've left the link to sign up in the description for the video and I hope you will sign up and I'll see you on the list see you later have a good Sunday